Welcome to Rust News. I've been crazy busy getting my RustConf presentation ready, then giving it at RustConf 2024 in Montreal. It went awesome. Now I'm back with a one-time sponsorship from the Rust Foundation itself, so I'm producing a couple extra videos and catching up on Rust versions. In this video, I'll do a roundup of the Rust 2024 project goals update and the Rust 1.80.1 hotfix release. The next video will be a deep dive into the huge 1.81.0 release. First off, let's cover Rust 1.80.1, which was released August 8th, 2024, to fix two regressions. Change one. This change fixes a bug that could occur in Rust versions 1.78 to 1.80, where an optimization caused the floating point value, not a number, to be equal to not a number, and 0.0, .0 to not be equal to negative 0.0. .0. But those are both wrong. By definition, not a number is not equal to anything, not even itself. And by definition, 0.0, .0 and negative 0.0, .0 are equal. This has now been fixed. Change 2. This change reverts some false positives introduced to the dead code lint in Rust 1.80. Nobody loves false positives. That's it for the hotfix changes. Next up, Nico Matsakis is leading an experimental new road mapping process. He covered three of these projects in his presentation for RustConf 2024. I am going to cover all 26 projects. Among these 26 projects are three which are referred to as flagship projects. We will go over these three flagship projects first since they are the most ambitious and most impactful efforts. Flagship Project 1. This project aims to bring the async Rust experience closer to parity with regular Rust. This is really a collection of two code subprojects and a meta subproject. The first code subproject is to resolve the send bound problem so that it is easier to use async functions in traits. The second subproject is to stabilize async closures, allowing for a much wider variety of async APIs. This feature is already implemented nightly, which is why this is primarily a stabilization effort. The third subproject is to reorganize the async work group itself to be better aligned and enable swifter work because there are a lot more async improvements that folks want to make. I'm looking forward to publishing an async Rust course when enough async changes have landed for me to feel truly happy about async. Flagship Project 2 is to resolve the biggest blockers to Linux building on the stable Rust compiler. Specifically, Part A is stable support for Rust for Linux's customized atomic reference counter type. Pointer types in Rust's standard library enjoy access to some unstable features that make them more ergonomic. Stabilizing these features will make it so that Rust for Linux's arc can do those same things, like the ability to be used in a method for self types and the ability to coerce dyne types and then invoke methods on the trait through dynamic dispatch. Part B is the ability to use labeled go-tos in inline assembler. This is an extension required by the Rust for Linux kernel support. You can imagine if you're writing significant amounts of assembler, not being able to use labeled go-tos would get irritating pretty quickly. Part C is some extended support of the offset of macro, which Rust for Linux needs to determine byte offsets of fields and structs. Part D is a project to set up dedicated Rust for Linux tests in the official Rust CI suite as part of committing to ensuring changes to Rust do not break Rust for Linux. Part E is to help with the need to use pointers to statics in constants. This is the way Rust for Linux creates vtables in read-only memory. Parts A through E are the regular goals for the project. The final parts, F through I, are stretch goals that have not found an owner to work on them yet. Stretch goal F is support for building and using sanitizers. In particular, KSAN, the kernel address sanitizer. Stretch goal G is to find agreement on the configuration options for building the Rust core libraries and the options the kernel will use and provide a standardized version of those libraries for use by the kernel. Stretch goal H is to stabilize some code generation features and compiler options that Rust for Linux needs to use. And last, 
Stretch goal I includes creating more ergonomic versions of the special patterns for safe pinned initialization and finding a solution to custom field projection for pin types or other smart pointers. Once again, these are stretch goals only because no one has committed to doing them yet. If you would like to contribute to this effort, reach out to someone on the Leadership Council on the Rust Lang website. Flagship project number three is to complete the Rust 2024 edition, which is scheduled to hit stable in early 2025. This is super exciting and an extremely huge topic. Instead of diving into it now, I'll cover this in much more depth in a later video. Project four, doc tests all need to be compiled. Doc tests are the tests that appear in your documentation comments. Each doc test had been compiled separately, which introduced a lot of compilation overhead. This project merges the doc tests and compiles them together to avoid the duplicate overhead. Now cargo test is much quicker when you have a large number of doc tests. This is the first project to have actually been completed from the list of 26 projects. Project five. This project is to prototype lifting most of the current limitations of const generics so that instead of only being able to use integer, float, bool, and care types as arguments, you can use any type, including generic types, or even specify underscore and let the compiler infer the type to use. This project should also allow associated const items to use generics and also introduces associated const equality bounds to bring feature parity with associated types. Project six. Add support in crates.io to receive and display a reason for a crate being yanked, and then add a way in cargo to provide this reason. Project seven. This project is the meta project to track the 26 projects and improve the project process itself. Project eight. This project adds stable support for infiltrate in the values of associated types, also known as associated type position infiltrate, or ATPIT. At bit? Something like that. Project nine. This project resolves some of the blockers preventing merging the cargo semver checks tool into cargo itself. This should make it easier to merge this tool into cargo in the future. Cargo semver checks is a tool that uses Rust doc to determine what sort of version bump you need as per semantic versioning requirements. Project 10. This project experiments with effects-based desugaring for maybe const functionality. This is another small step towards a better effects system and less divide between const and non-const. Project 11. This project aims to reduce the need for explicitly cloning reference counted types such as RC and ARC. The whole point of these values is to make it cheap to clone the reference. So it would be nice if that happened automatically more often. Project 12. This project explores different strategies for sandboxing build script executions in Cargo to eventually reduce or eliminate the risk of potentially arbitrary code running during builds. This would be a major improvement for supply chain security. Project 13. This project aims to experiment with automatic differentiation and GPU offloading features to enable easier development in the areas of scientific computing, high performance computing, and machine learning. Project 14. Cargo's current dependency resolver is brittle and under-tested. This project is to rewrite Cargo's dependency resolution as a new library based on the PubGrub algorithm. Project 15 aims to make Rust doc search easier to learn by making it more discoverable, more intuitive, and raising awareness about it with blog posts. A lot of people don't realize that Rust doc search supports searching for methods and functions by the types of arguments or return types that they have. There are a lot of powerful features that people don't know about. Project 16 aims to one, extend the next generation trait solver to stabilize the use of the next generation trait solver in coherence, checking and Rust doc and lints where applicable. And two, share the solver with Rust Analyzer. And three, make it so that the compiler can be successfully bootstrapped when only using the new implementation. Project 17 is optimizing Clippy and linting. This is also known as the Clippy Performance Project. This is an effort to make Clippy faster, so linting takes less time, both on CI-CD pipelines and on developers' machines. Project 18 is to write an RFC proposing a design for matching never types and other uninhabited types. 
Project 19. This project aims to implement a native Rust-C version of the Polonius Next Generation Borrow Checking Algorithm so that borrow checking scales better than the previous data log implementation. Project 20. Stabilize support for Cargo Script. The ability to have a single file that contains both Rust code and the stuff you would normally put in Cargo.toml. I'm especially excited to see how this one comes out. I was able to give my own input about proposed designs and how easy they would be or wouldn't be to learn for those new to Rust. Project 21. Stabilizing the .config features would allow providing more information to crate users reading the documentation. Specifically, this aims at providing Rust doc readers the ability to add visual markers to the render documentation to know under which conditions an item is available. For example, if a specific method is only available on Unix-like operating systems and not Windows, this would now show up in the documentation. Project 22. Move Rust C's support for parallel front end closer to stability by resolving internal compiler errors and deadlock issues, completing the test suite for multi threaded scenarios, and integrating a parallel front end into Bootstrap. This fits into the larger goal of improving Rust C build times by 20%. Project 23 is for Nico Matsakis to set up testing infrastructure for his A Mere Formality project and get two other members of the type team contributing to the project. A Mere Formality is intended to serve as the official model of how the Rust type system works. Project 24 switch to annotate snippets for rendering Rust C's output with no loss of functionality or visual regressions. The annotate snippets library is already used by Cargo to emit output. The idea is to have both Rust-C and Cargo use the same library so output can be identical in style. Project 25. Extend Cargo's caching of intermediate artifacts across a workspace to caching them across all workspaces of the user. This should increase cache hits and decrease overall storage usage on a machine. Project 26. This project is basically a formal audit of the standard library. The plan is to instrument a fork of the standard library with safety contracts and employ verification tools to verify it. And that's it for the 2024 Project Goals update. If you want more videos like this, sponsor me on GitHub. Today's Ferris artwork is a pen sketch by Lars Bergstrom, the chair of the Rust Foundation's board of directors. Today's analysis focuses on the eyes, which are obviously the focal point of this drawing. Notice how they draw you in peering into your very soul. As such, it is quite evident that Lars is a fan of manga, which has long focused on the eyes. If you want more videos like this, sponsor me on GitHub.